dream. I'm being chased by a monster, and I wake up just as it's about to get me, and I'm cold sweat. And the friend said, well, set your intention that the next time you have that dream, you're going to stop running and turn around and look at that monster. Got to look at it. And Pima was nervous, but she said she set the intention, next time I have the dream, I'll stop. So the next time she had the dream and the monster chased her, she ran faster. <laughs> but then the very next time, the second time, she set the intention again. The second time she had the dream again, she's running from the monster and all of a sudden a big wall comes up in front of her. She has no choice now but to turn around. Now let me pause a minute. How many of you have prayed for something good? only to run into a big old fat challenge. Well, let me tell you, the way, what, pe what appears to be in the way is the way. The scripture says, much tribulation worketh patience. You know, we pray for to be these things and to have more love and have more peace and all of these things, and then we hit the walls that calls us to have to turn around and find a way to show up differently. So in this dream, the wall comes up, and she turns around, and she said, as she turned around and looked at the monster, it froze. And Pima said, well, that made me feel better. It, got, it froze. But she heard, look closer. Look closer. And as she looked, she noticed the monster had pink fingernails. Pink fingernails. A monster with pink fingernails. And she began to chuckle and say, oh, it's all made up. And she woke up. And she never had that dream again. Now, what she realized was, it's all made up. It's an illusion. But until we're willing to look at what is causing us anxiety, until we're willing to face it, until we're willing to own the story, Dr. Brene Brown, we've studied her work. She has a brand new um, documentary out on Netflix that I highly recommend. It's exceptional. And one of the things that she teaches is that to learn the languaging to say, when you find yourself in conflict, when you find yourself in an argument, when you find yourself wanting to judge somebody else to do this, say, well, the story that I'm telling myself about them, the story that I'm telling myself about you, and to own it. To deal with the plank in your eye, the story that I'm telling myself about uh, whatever it is, the story I'm telling myself. And then another, par another distance you can go is to, to say, just like me, just like me, that person may be doing the best they can. Just like me, that person is probably struggling with, am I selfish? Am I selfless? How do I find my way in this? Just like me, that person is waking up. It doesn't mean we condone it. It doesn't mean we don't have boundaries. It doesn't mean we don't do things to change this world. But it does give us the tools that we create. We treat each one another with dignity. That you too, you are the image and likeness of God. Handle with care. Treat with dignity. How many of you are willing to turn it up and to really, really dig deep? To dig deep on being able to, to show up. Now what I can tell you is it's probably not useful for you to expect that nothing's ever going to bother you. That you're just going to watch the news or, or see the next White House commentary and just say, isn't this all wonderful? We're just going to hell in the handbasket. <laughs> and this all, you know, that stuff is going to anger you. The scriptures say Jesus was moved. He was moved. Things are going to rile you up. They're going to get you. But, but what happens is then you ha we have to inquire within. I'm the image and likeness of God. They're the image and likeness of God. And that leads us to the third point. The first one is to claim and live out our spiritual identity. The second one is to claim and live with spiritual dignity with spiritual inclusivity and the third one then is to live as a spiritual expression that whatever our world is needing whatever your world is calling for you are the light of the world you are the medicine our Native American friends teach us that we are the medicine you are the peace you are the love you are the light you are the healing balm B-A-L-M not B-O-M-B -B. you are the healing B-A-L-M you are the healing medicine in the world
when we think about showing up as, as the light of the world, you know, we have, it, it broke my heart recently, when we, in 2019, we have a major denomination who takes a vote on who gets God's love and acceptance. It, it breaks my heart that, you know, it, it somehow seems to be okay that God Almighty would disassociate with certain groups of people or reject certain people. And here's the thing about that. If we believe that God would love some and hate others, can you see how our own life is being divided? But my friends, this is the critical part. If we believe in a God that hates some and loves others, what does that give us permission to do? Hate. And until, until we can find it within ourselves to believe that God is love and love is unconditional and that there is unconditional love rejects no one. And when we start doing that, we don't have a license to hate. And I find myself sometimes getting really riled up and really mad at those people that still hate. And then what am I doing? So I, it's, it's, it's living in both worlds. It's feeling the impact. It's feeling the sadness. But it's somehow finding my way to not do the same thing. Amen? I have parents who are completely opposed theologically. And we have found our way through love. They disowned me at one time in my life. And it was the hardest thing. It was like a reversal in roles because I was telling my parents, you may have to disown me, but I will always love you. And I was the kid saying that. But love has kept that bridge. Now, it means we talk about the weather a whole lot. <laughs> we don't talk about politics. We don't talk about religion. You know, we don't talk about those things, but I'm, I love them. I'll talk about the weather or the garden all day long. You see what I'm saying, my friend? We need to meet each other in a way where we can meet each other. Amen? And then we work for what is right for each and every one of us. Band and Richard, I'm going to ask you to come up. The final thing that I want to point out to you is in, in how we are called to express. You see, the indwelling Christ's presence is alive and well. Parmahansa Yogananda Yogananda said this, the Christ consciousness within you has long remained hidden. Awaken this universal Christ by, deep, deep, by daily deep meditation and resurrect yourself from the tomb of ignorance, the tomb of unconsciousness. You see, Jesus the man was, was open to a life force greater than his self, yet a part of his self. And he became an opening to a life force then that was greater than himself, yet a part of himself. Eric Butterworth, again, the writer wrote, the Christian church has preached about the saving of society. But Jesus called for a society of saviors. Jesus called for a society of saviors. You and you and you and I must be the saviors. Don't stand looking to the heavens. Stir up the gift of God within you. You can be a saving influence. You can be a peacemaker. Declare your unity with God and with mankind by affirming, I am now established in spiritual unity with God and with all people on the earth. I am now established in spiritual unity with God and with all people of the earth. Would you say that with me? I am now established in spiritual unity with God and with all people of the earth. You see, our actions speak a lot louder than our beliefs. I want to close by showing you a three-minute video clip that talks about, um, it's recent, it took place in Tennessee, in a Methodist church. This is Pastor Steve Stone. And this pastor had to, had an opportunity and had to face some of his prejudice. But when he was directed to go back and to read his Bible, he had a resurrecting experience that called him to show up as love in a new way. Would you watch this clip? I'll never forget the morning that I saw an article about a group of Muslims who had bought 30 acres and were planning to build a complex. When I saw that, my stomach kind of tightened up. They were going to be right across the street from us. I felt that, that ignorance and that fear. So I prayed. I said, Lord, what are we supposed to do? The idea of Memphis Islamic Center started because we felt we needed a family life center, a place for people to pray and play, to socialize, and have a sense of community. Allahu Akbar. 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 Allahu Akbar.
It is a difficult time for Muslims in America. We did not expect to be welcomed. We thought we have to work hard. And one day we were driving by and we see a banner. And that banner says, Heart Song Church welcomes the Memphis Islamic Center to the neighborhood. Me and my wife both were thinking about leaving church because I, I just did not accept what was going on. Lord, we are so humble. I went to Pastor Steve and asked him, I said, what, what are we doing? He told me to uh, read the Gospels. When I read through those Gospels and I figured out I was the problem. <laughs> what was going on with the world today? I was the problem. And then we started building. In the month of fasting, the month of Ramadan was supposed to be our grand opening day where we start praying here and it was clear that we were not gonna have our hall ready. We got a call and Bashar said, we just wondered if we could use your building for our prayers. In case we don't get our permit in time. Instead of using the room for a few nights, we ended up spending the entire month of Ramadan at Hartsong Church. Ramadan brought us much closer. People started knowing each other on a personal level. We had done coat drives and food drives, and close to 9-11, we do a blood drive together. I would have never thought that I would be friends with Muslims right here. <laughs> and I love it. It's kind of like my world got bigger. We are better congregation now. We are better people because of this friendship with Heart Song. It's an amazing friendship that I can't imagine having missed out on. How's everybody doing today? Would you cheer louder if you're having fun? How many are you ready for your world to get bigger? Someone in your life where in your life are you ready to call on the resurrecting power to grow me, to expand me, to make me a little more big, a little more expansive, more loving, more light? May you remember your spiritual identity. May you know spiritual equality for all. And may you know that you are the light of the world and express your spirit. I invite you to join me in this song as we enter into a time of meditative prayer. You are the heart, you are the hands, you are the voice of spirit on earth, and who you are and all you do is a blessing to the world. Sing it with me. You are the heart, you are the hands, you are the voice of spirit on earth, and who you are and all you do is a blessing to the world. I invite you to close your eyes and to put your hands facing palms up in your lap. This life, my life, is one life that flows from one presence called by many names and yet defined by none. This life, my life, is the one life that breathes me, that flows through me, that animates me. That when I have a cut or a broken bone, it heals me. That when my heart is broken, it opens me. That when I say, yay, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it says, yes, but even in the presence of your enemies, I have prepared a table for you. There is nowhere you can go where there is no table prepared for you. And that table is the feast, the banquet of your own soul, your own being. Because you are a being of spirit. 
Your inheritance of, is of the gods. You are in this body. You are incarnate for one purpose, and that is to discover love. Every time you face a wall in your life, you will be hardened or you will be grown in love. The choice is yours and the choice is simple, and yet it requires us to spend time in prayer and meditation. It requires us to extract our I am from the clothing, the lampshade that we wear. It, in, it requires us to know ourselves as the light of the world in such a way that that matters most. And yet it is not a burden, it is the ultimate liberation to die to all other cares and to be born to this one desire is what life is all about. To die to everything else and to give oneself over as a sacred vessel is what Christ consciousness is all about. And do not let that word or any word ever entangle you in such a way that you would miss your blessing. Because remember, only you can claim it. Only you can proclaim it. For it has been given. It has been written upon your heart. You need no outside label, for you wear the label inside your own being. Every cell of your body, every piece of your hair is holy and wholly ordained. Don't ever know yourself other than anything as the light of the world. And if you, my people, will rise up into your own truth, into your own becoming, then you will see signs and wonders as never before. And I speak and I call you from within so that you will know the voice as your own voice. Rise up, rise up, rise up. Rise into your own healing and rise into your own revealing. Let the Holy Spirit of life lift you and bless you and laugh through you. Let it know through you. Let it sing through you. Let it dance through you. Let it paint through you. Let it make love through you. Let it rejoice through you. For all things are holy when you bow before the altar of your whole self. And to bow before the any altar of wholeness is to see the wholeness of all being. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. sacred space we say thank you any burden that we carry any concern on our heart those we're holding in prayer we lovingly speak their name into the space We claim the resurrecting power that we may know our true nature, our name. We live equality and stand for spiritual equality. And we know we're here to express the light of the world. I am the heart, I am the hands, I am the voice of spirit on earth, and who I am, and all I do is a blessing to the I invite you to open your eyes and to stand and to smile and to say, oh my Lord, <laughs> we are, we are the heart, we are the hands, we are the voice of spirit on earth and who to the world. Sing it one more time. We are the heart. We are the hands. We are the voice of spirit on earth. And who we are and all we do is a blessing. Are a blessing 
Tell somebody you're a blessing to the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm going to call up the amazing Rhoda Weaver. She's going to rock your soul in just a moment. And then Rhoda and Kat are going to rock your soul. So I'm just saying, look out. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward. This is the time where we inquire within and we ask, what is mine to give? What is the tithe, the offering that I am called to give? And as we hold it in our heart, acknowledging this life force that flows through us as the substance of our life, we acknowledge the substance that flows through this spiritual community because we too are a place about healing any case of mistaken identity and a place about bringing down any walls of division that starts within us. So we bless these gifts and we dedicate them together. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. I am now in perfect balance and flow with the universal tides of giving and receiving. Thank you, God, and so it is.
starving. So I, I have a theory that we've all been praying for her ankle, and it's just coming right <laughs> up here, right on out. <laughs> Keep <Thank> praying. <laughs> so thank you so much you. for that message. I want to invite our ushers to come forward, and with them, our prayer chaplain, Carol, and Madeline with our Sacred Service volunteer team. And we're reminded that there are so many ways that we offer ourselves to and through this community. We offer ourselves in prayer, and there's a prayer box that sits on the table back here, and you're welcome to add your prayers to it, and they'll be held by our prayer chaplain team this week in confidence. You can see Madeline at the Welcome Center afterwards if you have, want to find out ways to offer your service. And we're grateful for all of these offerings and for these gifts this morning. And so together we're going to pray. In gratitude, we bless the resources that flow through our lives and through our Unity Center, the gift of prayer and our sacred connection, our capacity to serve and make a difference with our lives. And together we affirm, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God enables us, the presence of God abides with us, Wherever, Wherever we, we are, are God, God is, and all is well. So in honor of Easter, instead of the traditional peace song, we've got another song to close. We invite you to stand. I also want to remind you, if your name is in the bulletin and you purchased one of these flowers, please, please feel free to take your pick. Take one of these beautiful flowers home. myself this morning I had a revelation yes a revelation I had a revelation when I woke myself this morning I had a revelation yes I know that I came here for love when I walked into the room I had a that you are blessed. Have hug someone and have a happy Easter. Thank you for being here. God bless you.